Right there. Whoa. Unless you've been living under a rock recently, you're probably aware that mountain bikes have got a lot longer over the last few decades. The idea being that a longer bike is more stable and therefore easier to ride fast down a hill. But you may have noticed that some of the top enduro racers aren't running particularly long bikes by modern standards. And this has got some people wondering, are modern bikes too long? And that's what we're going to try and find out today. I've got the new Canyon Strive in a size large and an extra large. And despite Jack Moyer winning last year's Enduro World Series on a size medium version of the old Canyon Strive, the new version is a lot longer and is now one of the longest bikes you can get from a mainstream brand. According to Canyon's sizing chart, at 191 centimeters or six foot three, I'm right in between the two sizes, so I should be able to ride either one comfortably. Today we've booked on the uplift here at Inalith and Downhill Trails. We're gonna do a load of back-to-back -back runs on the two bikes, see how they compare, and maybe do some timing too to see if one is faster than the other. I'm gonna ride a trail that I actually raced on last weekend at the Tweed Love Enduro. It's got a really good mix of tight turns, uh, steep tech and fast sections. And because I raced on it last weekend, I have a reasonable idea of where I'm going already, so it shouldn't take too long to get up to speed. But first of all, here are some key stats for the two bikes. So the size large has a 505 millimeter reach and the XL has a whopping 530 mil reach. I measured the wheelbase on both bikes at 1312 mil for the large and 1347 for the XL. And both bikes have a 442 mil chainstay length according to my tape measure. The Strive does have headset cups which can adjust the reach by plus or minus five mil, but to keep things simple, I've got both bikes in their neutral setting. I've been careful to set both bikes up identically, including suspension setup, tire pressures, cockpit settings. One thing I have changed is the bar height is slightly taller on the XL, so I'm aiming to get about the same ratio of stack and reach. So with all that said, let's go ride and see what we find out. So just finished testing. So to summarize, did a warm up lap on the XL. Then first time run on the XL was a 256. Then I swapped to the large and did two 252s. Swapped back to the XL and did another 252. And then I got uh, a little bit held up uh, by another rider. Ended up being a 256. So I reckon it probably would have been there or thereabouts 252. And then I swapped back to the large and did another 252. The XL felt a little bit more unwieldy in the tight stuff, especially at first, like the front end felt quite far away from me. I ended up actually lowering the bar height by 10 mil on the XL, and that really helped me to sort of feel more over the front end and, and sort of in touch with the front wheel. But even then, there were a few places on the course where the XL always felt a little bit harder work, you know, it takes a bit more effort to sort of keep on top of. When I went back to the large, it never really felt too short. So there were times when I was braking really hard where it maybe dived a little bit more. I was never like being, getting tripped up or, or feeling like the bike was sketchy or, or twitchy. So I kind of noticed the downsides of the XL a little bit more than the downsides of the large, but both were pretty, pretty similar really, like you can adapt to either quite well. I suppose I noticed the bike less on the large, I just sort of concentrated on what's in front of me and just rode. Whereas on the XL, I felt like I had to put a bit more mental effort into keeping over the front and not letting that front wheel getting away from me. The large is a big bike. You know, it's bigger than most brands XLs. 
So, you know, bear that in mind. Like I'm not comparing a typical XL to a typical large. It's not like the large is a size down for me. It's, it feels about right. And then the XL, it's totally rideable. Uh, I guess that'd be the main takeaway. Like you can ride either just fine. I would definitely take the large out of these two. I, I preferred that today. And I think even more so for like tracks I don't know, or when you're not kind of totally on it, I think the large is probably a bit easier for me to ride. In the future, I might try a slightly higher bar on the large or try the offset cups and maybe try five mil longer, five mil shorter. But I think really it's not gonna make a huge difference. Like nowadays that bikes are, I would say kind of there or thereabouts in terms of sizing, going 10, 20 mil either way doesn't seem to make too much difference to me. I guess the other final takeaway for me is that the large, I felt I could ride quickly uh, straight away. Whereas the XL, it made more sense once I knew the track and I knew where I was going. And I think that sort of fits with the difference between downhill bikes and enduro bikes. Like in a downhill race, you know where you're going and you can ride more aggressively and you maybe want that more stable, longer wheelbase, which maybe is why uh, downhill riders are still riding uh, kind of longer and longer bikes. Whereas if that's kind of coming down a, a peg or two in enduro, I guess that's because you know the tracks less well and so you need to be a bit more reactive. And for me, the smaller bike um, was just that bit easier to ride when you're not so sure where you're going, you're not quite as committed. What size you go for, I think largely depends on what type of riding you do, whether you want to prioritize stability, for tracks you know well, going as fast as you possibly can, or something a little bit more reactive, particularly for trails that are less familiar to you. So what do you think? Are you in between sizes? Are you thinking of sizing up or starting to size down now? Let us know in the comments, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and see you in the next one.